Reliable Robotics is a startup company that's been working on autonomous flights. They actually reached a new partnership this week as they look to build and I guess perfect, I should say, the next gen flight auto uh, automation systems. For that, we want to bring in Robert Rose. He's a co-founder and CEO of Reliable Robotics. Robert, it's great to have you on Yahoo Finance. You're a leader in this space when we talk about aircraft automation. You've been testing flights from my understanding. I guess the big question what everyone wants to know is how close are we to this becoming something that's widely adopted and widely used? Closer than you think. I think it's going to take a lot of time to get there. We have a lot more testing that needs to be done and certification processes that need to work, be worked through. And I think the transformation is also going to occur in cargo first. And that's why we're focusing on small cargo operations, specifically operations that enable vehicles like the Cessna Caravan to operate remotely. In fact, you flew that Cessna Caravan not too long ago. It's a Cessna 208, I think, and I'm not an a, a pilot, but it's just so cool. Uh, there was no pilot in the front seat. Uh, they were doing this from a control tower 80 miles away, correct? Well, to be clear, we're still in an experimental test phase, and so we do have a safety pilot on board the plane. But we have demonstrated unmanned operations on a previous vehicle, or a Cessna 172, which is a four-passenger aircraft, we did demonstrate unmanned operations of that vehicle over a populated area in the United States. Uh, the Cessna Caravan, we still have at least uh, a year, more likely two years to go on certification of this system before this can become a, a routine technology that can uh, be used on a regular basis. Robert, the new partnership that you reached this week, I guess, how is this going to enhance the safety and the confidence, do you think, in autonomous flights? So we're working with a number of partners, and, and this week we announced a partnership with, I believe you're referring to uh, Dedalian. Uh, this is a company based in Switzerland. Uh, their founder, CEO, Luke Van Dyke, I've known him since uh, 2010, over a decade now. We work together at SpaceX. He's working on a particular portion of this problem, uh, focusing on sensitive void and using uh, vision-based systems for detecting uh, surrounding air aircraft. Um, it's a complementary technology to what we're developing. We're focusing primarily on automation of the vehicles and the remote operations. And obviously, Sense and Avoid is a key component in enabling these types of operations. Can you give us a timeline where we as passengers, if it'll happen in our lifetime, might be able to fly aboard a plane where we don't have to be a pilot, where it will be totally autonomous? It's going to happen sooner than you think. I, I want it to happen tomorrow, trust me. Uh, but it's going to take time for us to work through with the regulatory processes. Again, this is why we're starting first on cargo. I think the transformation is actually going to occur on small aircraft initially. I think it's going to take some time before the large transport category planes, the, the large passenger jets are fully automated. I actually believe that there's a great deal of opportunity in the near term enabling regional travel. So. For example, uh, we currently use about 130 airports today on routine basis in the United States, but we actually have 5,000 airports available for public use. And for someone like me, um, I wanna be able to travel out to these regional airports. I've got um, my uh, mother-in-law and my family live in uh, Oregon, and there's no major commercial service uh, for us to get there. And my wife and three boys, it takes 12 hours to drive or 12 hours on a commercial plane. And that's because you got to go all the way up to Portland, Oregon, and then drive several hours. But there's a, a municipal airport right next to their house. And so in the near future, you'll be able to rally a plane, uh, perhaps using your phone, and uh, fly out of your lo local municipal airport and take this to any place in the country that you want to go. A lot of this technology, though, in some forms, doesn't it? It's existed for years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't planes been, uh, computers have been landing planes for decades, or is that just computer assisted? I know the military has been doing this for decades. And even on, in the commercial world, there's a great deal of automation that enables the in route portion of an aircraft to be automated. And much of landing is automated, but one thing, um, uh, that's not apparent to most people is actually automated landing is only made available at a small handful of airports in the United States because you need infrastructure at the airport in order to enable it. This is one of the first problems that we solved at Reliable Robotics is this navigation problem of knowing very precisely where the aircraft is relative to the runway. And with a system like ours, you can put an aircraft down onto a runway uh, in zero visibility, total whiteout conditions at any runway in North America. 
Um, hey, Robert, just real quick, because we only have about a minute left here, but how much do these systems cost and how long does it take to install something like this? The installation process in the early days, it's going to take time and the equipment is going to cost a fair bit. This is one reason we're focusing on cargo first, because these small aircraft are easier to integrate with. And uh, we can recover the costs of, of bringing the technology into these aircraft systems somewhat quickly.